This week, there's a new four picks and one word for you. As usual, you get the four pictures, you guess the word, and then I tell you if you got it right. That's it. Let's go. Okay, here we go, forensic science time. We're going to start by looking at something called trace evidence, which is probably the main thing that forensic science is all about. And I want you to first of all think about the word trace and what that might mean. Have a think about that for a second. Alright, I've got a little picture coming up now. Trace evidence. Now trace means minute, so small, tiny things, and when we talk about trace evidence, that means things that can be used to link a person with a place or a thing. So I've got a little slide that I made here that might help you to kind of understand that a little bit. All right, now you know how much I love Lego. So just a couple of examples of this, all right. If a person is at a crime scene, there's little bits of them that might be left behind. So last week I asked you to think about that a bit. You might know that, for instance, um, part of their hair might come off and be left behind, or things from their clothing might be left behind. Uh, you might also have fingerprints left behind. But then you have things that when people leave a crime scene, for instance, that they take with them without knowing. So they might have things on them like fur from an animal. They might have something like dirt in their shoes or pollen on their jumper. They take traces with them, we all do everywhere we go, that can link us to places that we've been. Now the third one is to do with things or objects. And the same thing can happen, that you can either leave bits of you on an object or bits of the object can come off onto you. So for instance, if you are eating a sandwich, there's little bits of sandwich that might end up on your clothes. Or maybe you uh, touch something and you leave your fingerprint on that thing. Or maybe you pick up something that's fluffy and some of the fibers come off onto you. So you can see that the person, the place and the object Bits and pieces of each can be left on other things, and these are called trace evidence. So on the next little slide that you're going to see, I've put some examples of different types of trace evidence that is used in court and in crimes to solve cases. Uh, science has a really big part to play in this and in TV shows to do with this you see one person who knows all about all of the different types of trace evidence but actually in real life you have scientists that specialize in one thing so you might have a scientist who specializes in pollen for instance you might have a scientist who specializes in glass this next slide has some different examples of types of trace evidence so before we talk about them more in the coming weeks have a look at this Take a little bit of time, see if you can identify what all of them might be. funny to a teenager. Uh, the teenager. Yeah, this is the teenager, Abby. I show her a cartoon that I found on the internet, a science related one. Uh, if she thinks it's funny, she's going to pick one of these two. And then you get to see the cartoon. If she does not think it's funny and picks one of those two, then you'll never ever get to see the cartoon. Sad days for you. Okay, you ready, Abby? Yeah, I'm ready. Show face.
bit of an activity and this is why last week I asked you to try and get some kind of magnifier. It can be a magnifying glass like I said, it could be if you've got a microscope, brilliant. It can be one of those little microscope cameras that you click onto your iPad. But if you've got something that you can magnify with, this will be a lot better. If not, don't worry, you can look at some of the stuff that I've got. Okay, the activity that you're going to do today, I'm actually pretty excited about because I want to do it myself, so I'm going to go do it too. Uh, we're going to search for trace evidence in our home. We're going to search for evidence of particular people being in our home uh, and maybe some things and maybe even places in our home. So, here's what you've got to do. Find some kind of room in your house that you can spend some time in and you have to search that room for some trace evidence. For example, I'm going to go into my lounge room and I'm going to look at the carpet. And then I'm going to go to the kitchen and I'm going to look around on the benches. And if you find any little bits of trace evidence, like bits of hair or little fibers or bits of food, or maybe you might even find in our house, there's just dirt everywhere because we come in and out all the time. We're building things all the time and we have a fireplace. So maybe little bits of ash, things like that. And you're going to collect them with sticky tape. I'll show you how to do that now. Your trace evidence on the sticky tape you're going to stick it onto some paper and then we're going to make three groups of trace evidence on your paper so have a look here at the one that I'm doing so on the paper have three headings one for evidence that kind of points towards a particular person and then I want you to have a column that points towards a particular place and one that points towards things, objects. And when you get your trace evidence, you'll have a thing, like if it's uh, fiber, that could link to a particular person in your family, or it could link to some furniture, or I don't know, a toy or something like that. So um, stick it under the right heading. Then I just want you to write next to it what you think it is. Have a little look with your magnifying glass, if you've got one, and um, maybe take a photograph. where we talk about different words that end in ology and what they mean. So uh, this week I got messages already from a bunch of kids with different ology words they've made up. Feel free to do this every week and send them to me. This made me laugh, okay? So the first one I got was saxophonology, clearly someone who plays the saxophone. Then schoolology, playology, driveology, minecraftology, pretty important one I think. This one probably was my favorite one. Be outsideology <laughs> and frictionology. Nice one, especially because we learned that last term. Um, great ideas. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about, a couple, about one that is an actual word and then a couple that I think might be made up, but I found them on the internet. All right, today's word is ornithology. Some of you might have heard of it before. Some of you might straight away know what I'm talking about. But ornus is an old Greek word that means bird. So when you see ornitho on the front of something, it means bird. And so this word ornithology is the study of birds. I'll make sure I've got the words here on the screen so that you can see them. Ornithology. Now, you can also use the word ornitho in other things. So I've heard of a thing called ornithophobia, which is someone who's scared of birds. So there's a teacher and our staff who's really scared of birds, like terrified of birds. You might even know her. And uh, so she has ornithophobia. Didn't even know it was a thing. But then I found two other words, which I've written down in my little notebook, that have to do with birds as well, that I'm pretty sure are made up, but people have started using it like a real word. So the first one is plumology. And plume in the old Latin word means feather. So it's the study of feathers. So some scientists study feathers. They study the way they lock together, the way they uh, change in flight, the numbers of feathers birds have on their wings. Um, and someone's called this plumology, but I think it might be made up because I can't find it in actual science dictionaries or anything. And the third one that I thought was pretty funny was penguinology, the study of penguins. 
I also don't think that's a real science word. Pretty sure someone's just made that up, but I could be wrong. Anyway, this week, try and find some more ology words that you can make up and use in your everyday language and uh, see if you can fool your parents into it thinking that it's a real word.